Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at recommender systems utilizing the Movie Lens dataset. Let's get started. We are going to be using the classic uh, Movie Lens dataset. Um, now let's give a little bit of a discussion here about what exactly is a recommender system. Specifically we're going to be using what's called uh, collaborative filtering to make predictions or filtering again about um, the interest of a specific user using what we call collective preference, uh, sometimes also called collective intelligence. Um, and it's about the taste information for uh, a multitude of users or that's collaborating, they're collaborating together. Now they don't necessarily know they're collaborating. Again, it can be, um, it can be kind of in the background, okay? So very similar to how you guys would use uh, Google research uh, search options and, and whatnot. Um, now, there is an underlying assumption, though, that, for example, if some user A has the same opinion as user B on a specific issue, A is more likely to have B's opinion on some different issue um, X, for example, than to have the opinion on X of some other randomly chosen user. So if you, if you look at, for example, A and B here may have, uh, yeah, A and B here may have similar tastes. So then they're going to be relatively similar to this person here. Um, now, this this let's talk about a little bit about this image. This is uh, again courtesy of Wikipedia, our friendly uh, uh, online sources, I guess. Um, but this is discussing collaborative filtering. So first, people are going to have um, different items or such as videos, images, games, recipes um, that they like. Now then, the system is going to make predictions about the user's rating and then for a specific item that is not yet rated. So this is very similar to how um, Amazon, for example, would start to look at your previous purchase history and say, oh, maybe you like this item or you maybe like to read this book um, or watch this video for Netflix, for example. And so then the system, again, it's going to make those predictions from the user's ratings for an item that is definitely not in the set, not in the set. Okay, and then this new prediction is going to be built upon existing ratings of other users with similar ratings of active users. Okay, so we compare those people across. And then in this, and again, in this image, all right, we're gonna say, for example, that the system is going to predict the user will not like this video. So this should be based on these two individuals. They're very similar in nature. This person probably won't like that, uh, that video. So let's go on and actually give this, give this a try. Now, uh, we're gonna be using, again, Spark for this, and we're gonna be using collaborative, uh, let me add this up in here. So we're going to be doing collaborative filtering. Now, specifically, we are going to be using the ALS model, um, and let me actually do this properly. This is alternating least squares um, and so again this implementation is going to actually have quite a few parameters in it um, but we're probably going to um, do just some of the basics uh, so let me actually list out some of the basics that we have um, so we have the number of blocks okay so the number of blocks is going to be used for parallelization of a computer, okay, so um, set it to negative one. Um, negative one is going to imply uh, here is auto configure. Okay, um, if you're not sure about what, what you're doing with it, I would highly recommend using um, negative one. Um, otherwise, again, you can play with uh, different types as well. And now we also have the rank. So this is the number of latent factors in the model. Uh, then we're going to have iterations. All right, and this is the number of iterations it's going to run uh, somewhere. Again, we can also use probably a, um, we could maybe use something like a, a, a different type of method. So we can do, I don't know, a grid search as well. Um, hold on real quick. Let me see what's going on. Okay, everything's back online. 
So the next thing for uh, based on our iterations in here is the lambda. Now this is going to specify uh, regularization. Uh, for the parameters, we also have implicit preferences. In here, this is going to specify uh, whether we're going to use uh, feedback for the ALS. Uh, so for example, uh, one is going to be adapted for implicit feedback of our data. Then we also have in here an alpha in here, and this parameter is going to be applicable uh, for our implicit feedback that's in our uh, preferences in here. Uh, and so it kind of governs our baseline of confidence in uh, our preferences that we're observing. So let's go on and get started on this. So from PySpark ML, uh, we want evaluation. Uh, we're going to import here a regression evaluator. Then we also want from PySpark ml.recommendation import ALS and then again we need to actually well I'll put these I'll put all of these in here we also need to do um, from spark.ml oh, hold on let me grab something else real quick so let's do from pi spark well I don't have everything selected so from PySpark.sql, we want to import our Spark session. And then we also, uh, let's also go on and set up our Spark session. Oh, well, let me put these in, run these. Spark is going to be our Spark session uh, dot builder. Whoops. Hold on, I didn't actually install everything today. Let me rerun that. Let's get back to it. So let's go on and instantiate the uh, session. So we uh, have our builder in here. Uh, we want our app name in here, and I'm going to just call this um, uh, Movie Lens. Get her create. Um, now, once we we actually have already imported everything that we need in here, so let's go on and also read in our data. Uh, and this is the movie lens data is a very common uh, data set for people to use uh, because again it's um, well, again it's such a it's such a famous data set uh, again just look and there's some very famous graphics that you can use also to take a look um, and we'll probably do one of the graphics not today but another day we'll play with it a little bit whoops what didn't you like Copy path. Uh, and let's look at um, let's look at actually the let's take a look at the data. So again, here it's actually just three variables in here. We have the movie ID, we have the rating, we have the user ID, um, and that takes up too much space. <clears throat> so let's go on and do a bit of descriptive statistics. So we can see that one thing is that it, the model is definitely split up a little bit in how it looks. We have full data. Um, again, they vary widely on their specific types. Now this is a small data set again, but it's also a, a nice little toy data set for this. Um, later on we'll probably work with some food data sets that are really fun, particularly when we get into natural language processing. Uh, we can also build a recommender system uh, with uh, natural language processing in the back end, which is really fun. Uh, so we need to go on and split this data set into our uh, train and our test data. We'll do a random split here and we will do this on 70% and 30% and let's make sure and set our seed again I'm going to set it to 42 uh, now we're going to instantiate our uh, ALS uh, data here and so let's set our max iteration here to 5 again we don't want this to run forever our regularization parameter is 0 0.01 
Um, and again, I'm making it smaller than the standard. Again, our max iterations is 10. Our, uh, our normal regularization parameter is zero or is 0.1. And so again, I'm gonna be changing these up a little bit. Uh, let's also do, um, let's do what? What else do we want to split on this? Uh, our user column. Column in here is going to be our user ID. ID, uh, and then we want our item column in here to be movie ID, and then our rating column in here is going to be our rating. So let's go on and run this, and then let's create our uh, model in here, and let's do um, ALS.fit. We want it on our training training data. So let's also uh, see how the model actually is going to do. So we do model, oh, want to make our predictions. Predictions in here, and so we do model.transform in here and on our test data. And let's take a look at how this looks. And we'll see how this runs. One thing that we can change in here if our data is not too good. One thing is that this is a small data set, so we can change the size here, maybe to 80, 20 or something on our split uh, to see if it'll run a little bit better. Um, but we won't worry about that now unless uh, everything's doing absolutely horribly. Um, so let's also go through and double check on our evaluator. Uh, we want our metric name in here to be the RMSE. Our label column in here is going to be rating. Our prediction column in prediction column. There we go. Is going to be prediction. Let's run this and let's actually grab the RMSE. And this is going to be on our predictions. And I'm going to actually just have it go on and print here, RMSE, RMSE. And so let's take a look and see how it did. So this is this is gonna actually, so let's actually do a little bit of a discussion on this, is how this goes. This particular RMSE, is going to describe our error in terms of the stars rating column. So again, we're going to have basically plus or minus two stars. So probably not the best. Um, but one thing that we can do though is say, how do we actually, how would we actually give this? model, how do we actually use it to evaluate, not evaluate, but to recommend someone, uh, some movie. Okay, so for example, we can, um, let's grab a specific user, uh, user one, okay, and we're going to grab um, a test user, let's fil filter out, uh, we want the test user, user ID, uh, and I'm going to pick, uh, let's do user one, since I, since I said one in there, over here. Uh, and then let's do something like dot select in here. And we don't want the actual answer, so we want movie ID. And we want, whoops, movie ID, and we want the user ID and so let's take a look at that user really quickly well, dot show <clears throat> so here's a particular movie ID and here's the user ID so based on this information we're going to throw in what they currently have and we're going to see if we can recommend them something so let's give them a recommendation Let's call it REC. So we have our model.transform 
here, and then we'll hit have this as user one. Oops, user one. And so now we can actually take a look. So we have our recommendation. We want to order by here our prediction. And then we want this ascending. Ascending is false show. And let it run for a second again. It's going to take a second. All right, so what this is actually doing in here is their highest their highest score, okay, is going to be movie ID 70. Then the next one is 76, then 74, then 97. So if we had, for example, the key, this is this, this is the keys, and we, then we could use this to actually show it and filter out what the actual name of the movie is, then we can actually say that we created up a recommendation engine for this movie data set. Now, again, this is not exactly the most accurate that we have. Okay, that's fine. Uh, because again, look, this, this data set is quite small. Now, if, for example, we went through, and let me do, um, yeah, let me just show it. So again, here we're just looking at the top 20 rows. Now, if we had more features in here, we'd be able to create a much better data set, uh, or a data set, a much better uh, model. Another thing is usually with um, like Yelp reviews or movie reviews, you also have what people have talked about. Um, and the next, the next thing that we're gonna cover is natural language processing. And then we can actually add in natural language processing. So based on this person's actual reviews in the past, uh, what they said they liked, again, their star rating, as well as um, how they feel about other, uh, other movies using their actual words, we can actually do a better prediction about what movies they may or may not like. So again, this is what this wind up, what this is wind up actually predicting again is how many stars they would actually be predicting for this. Now again, the, the issue here is that you can't really, whenever you're giving these predictions in here, notice that we wind up actually getting negative review. All right, you can't actually give negative stars. It's it's actually truncated between usually one and five. So there are going to be some issues. And remember that error is plus or minus about two stars. So you can take this with a, a grain of salt, okay? I would, I would personally prefer it to be like your error term to be plus or minus one half uh, or one even uh, for doing prediction of star ratings. But again, this also shows how difficult sometimes it is to create these recommender systems. Thanks everyone for watching. If you like this, please comment, subscribe, and click that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.